Okay, today I'm going to give you a good comparison of density and specific heat. Now you've all done whatever you're doing, stop. This is when you want to focus in and really get the idea of what we're doing here. I'm going to be showing you a comparison between density and specific heat. I grilled you until you were blue in the face and you never wanted to see a density problem again. To try and get you these, to understand the idea of how to do unit cancellation, now comes the benefit. Because I was thinking forward to exactly the kind of calculation we're going to show you today to be able to get you a good understanding of how to do this easily. So, William, we're going to start now with density. And we're going to be looking at density in terms of... Here, let's get this over. There. Okay. Density is mass per unit volume. Royce, you need to be looking up, even you. And that is, if we do grams per mil, that would be one way to write density. I'm serious. I want everybody to stop writing. This is going to be on the video, yes, but you need to be watching right now so you can get the hang of this. Grams is going to be given in the simplest kind of problem. Remember in density there were three problem types. The one where we have you find density, in which case I have to give you grams and mils. Now, Brian, can you tell me how I would solve for density now? Yeah, sure, just like it looks. Piece of cake. And that's how we come up with this weird unit of measure. It's not a single unit of measure, it's two. Okay, that's, that's old stuff. So we're just dividing 30 into 4, and we get the 0 0.133. Now, the second type is a little bit more challenging, but at this point in time should be feeling, if you can't remember, at least you're feeling comfortable with it. It doesn't look quite so weird. You don't need to take notes on this. The video will be up tonight. I just want you to give me your full attention so you can watch this. Now, in this case, if I'm asking you to find grams, I have to give you density and mils. Now, if I'm going to solve, I just put grams on top because grams is what we are looking for. Remember, we always start with density when we do the grid. Grams is on top if grams is what we have to find. And then when we use our mills, that goes to the top. And who can tell me why is it on the top? Huh? Because it's the given. Yes. Because the gra no, not because, gram not because grams is given. The grams is what we're trying to find. That's why grams is on the top here, and mills is going to be on the top here. Did I ask you about mills on the, what, where's going to, why is mills on the top? Yeah, yeah so, it, so it'll cancel. But grams is on the top because of the, the five. Okay, so we're good there. And Lucy, here's a, another problem, and we're going to say uh, mills is what we're trying to find, and if mills is what we're trying to find, how am I going to write this? 0.133 grams on top and mils on the bottom? Or am I going to have mils on the top and 0 0.133 grams on the bottom? Okay, and why do we have mils on the top? That's what we're trying to find. Okay, and there we are. Mils on top, grams on bottom. Grams over 1. Yes. Yeah, you betcha. I'll get that up for you. Okay. So we wind up with 30 mils as our answer. And have you noticed here that I use the same variables in every case? I started with 4 grams and 30 mils, and I always used 4 grams and 30 mils as my variables. And I used the same specific heat that we calculated up here. Not specific heat, I'm sorry, density. Use the same density that we calculated up here. Am I making sense? All right. Now, let's compare that to specific heat. Look at my unit of measure here for specific heat. I've got three 
different variables. How do you get... How do these stupid scientists get that kind of nonsense, some mumbo-jumbo stuff? Huh? How does that happen? Magic. It's magic. No? All that happens is some guy did an experiment. He wanted to find out how many joules it took to raise five grams of something. Okay, he had five grams of the stuff, put it into a calorimeter, and he said, okay, uh, if I'm going to get the, the 30 degrees centigrade change, what, what, how can I use this in the future? So he took his three numbers, and he put the joules on top, and the degree centigrade, and the mass on the bottom. And we come up with grams degree centigrade on the bottom when we run the numbers. But no units are canceling out. And so this is just exactly like what we did to find the density up here. Okay, we wound up with a unit of measure that nothing, no units of measure canceled out, just numbers. And now we have the same situation here. All that cancels out is numbers because we multiply 5 times 30 and divide it into 180 and we get 1.2. And that winds up being joules per gram degree centigrade. Now, let's look at another problem. Okay, this time we're going to find joules. So, Hunter, what am I going to put on top? Is it going to be 1.2 joules or grams degree centigrade on the top? Uh, because that's what we're trying to find. Okay, and so our calculation winds up looking like this. Okay, we've got our 1.2 joules. Now, you see, this isn't quite as intimidating now because you've done those density problems. And why is grams on the top here, Hunter? It's given. Yes, it's given, but why is it not on the bottom of the fraction? Why do we put it on the top? Yeah, you do. Honestly, you do. You really do. How did this get... See, you knew. Yes, you knew. Yeah, you do. Now, now you know better. Okay, good. And gladiola. Why do we have the 30 degrees centigrade there on the top? Right. And because we had joules on the top, that guy is left, and at the end, he is at the top of whatever fraction we had. And because he's at the top, that will give us a correct answer, and that will be joules. If this guy was upside down and we had 1.2 joules on the bottom and the grams degree centigrade on the top, what we would get at the end is 1 over 180. Because we would flip all of these so that we could cancel out, right? That would be the inverse. And that dog don't hunt. Mm. You didn't, never heard that before, huh? Yeah, that dog don't hunt. That's, that's for good old southern boys that are talking about their coon dogs. Go out, they go out raccoon hunting. Yeah. Anyway, so that dog won't hunt. Now, here we go. This time we're looking for grams. And David, what are we going to put on top? I've got uh, 1.2 joules or grams degree centigrade. Huh? Who's on top? Grams degrees centigrade or 1.2 joules? And why? You're going to start off with joules on top? Why would you put joules on top? Look at what you're asked to find. Um, because you're going to, okay, I'm sorry, you're going to put grams on top and joules on the bottom. Uh -huh. Because joules will cancel out. And don't leave grams degrees, don't leave degrees centigrade behind. Yeah, because you're going to have to find those and not have to cancel them out. Yeah. Right. Okay. And so, we got our grams degree centigrade on top. <coughs> that looks a little strange. Yes, it is. And we got 1.2 joules on the bottom. And now look, this you have not run into before. This is what happens when you have three variables. Okay? And so, 
I'm going to go down and uh, get this guy on the bottom. These guys are on top. This cancels with this. Stop. 